The Eagles have went ahead and added another veteran tight end to that room, but does that stop them from adding a potential pass catcher at the draft? Plus, take him, trade up, or trade down. We're going to play a little game here with some first-round draft prospects. All that and more on today's edition of LOE. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in, everyone, to another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. For seven seasons running, we are your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, delivering you five episodes each and every week. Not 365 days a year, but close enough. And we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. And I'm your host, Gino Camilleri. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about the newest Eagles edition at the tight end position. And we're going to get into a little game called Take Him, Trade Up, or Trade Down. But first, today's episode of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning bet guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. So as I said, the Philadelphia Eagles have made a signing today, and they love to do this, man. Howie Roseman just will keep you on your toes when you're not expecting it. I get home from the gym, I look at my phone, and... The NFL account tweeted it 31 minutes ago that the Eagles had signed tight end from the New York Jets, CJ Uzama. And you're probably saying, who is this guy? We got, or you got already got Albert O, whose last name is hard enough to pronounce. Who is CJ Uzama? I'm actually a pretty big fan of CJ Uzama. More of what he did with his time in Cincinnati, more than what he did in his time with the New York Jets. He signed a sizable deal a couple years ago at 28 years old to go to the Jets to hopefully be Aaron Rodgers, not Aaron Rodgers at the time, but Zach Wilson's go-to guy. And hopefully this year with Aaron Rodgers there, he was potentially going to be a veteran tight end weapon that they could rely on. Well, he ends up getting hurt this year. The year before he puts up a low of 232 yards after going for a big year in his final year in Cincinnati for 493 yards, close to 50 catches. But he is an upgrade, in my opinion, over what you had in Albert O, in Grant Calcaterra, in Jack Stoll, who is now with the New York Giants. Does this stop you from going and potentially adding another tight end in the draft? Absolutely not. But should it put your mind at ease a little bit that this Eagles team will have a better opportunity to go and play in more 12 personnel packages? 100%. Is CJ Uzama going to be a guy who you want to be your number two tight end in terms of targets? I would say he's a replacement level player in that regard. But if you look at the past, he's put up seasons of 234 yards as a second year player. 439 yards in 2018, 242 the next year, 493 in 2021, and 232 in that 2022 season, his first year with the Jets. In that 2021 season, he had five touchdowns. Should you expect that type of number from him? No, absolutely not. Should you expect more than two catches that you got out of Jack Stoll all of last year? I would say so. Could he be a... 15 to 20 target type of player this season who can get you 300 yards and potentially pick up two to three touchdowns in the red zone for you? Absolutely. If you go back and look at his Cincinnati tape, that's really the role that he kind of played. And he was the number one to a degree sharing time with Tyler Eifert when he was there. But he made the best of his role. And what is his role going to be in Philadelphia? It's going to be primarily to be a very good blocker. He's very good at that. He is a big brooding tight end. I mean, heck, what does pro football reference have him at? 6'5", 271 pounds. 271 pounds for a tight end. You're basically a sixth offensive tackle at that point. Same thing with Albert O. That's the role that he is going to be asked to play. 
can we get these guys in there to be reliable blockers? But at the same time, can they give you more receiving upside than the guys last year? Grant Calcaterra, who's still on the roster, he probably has the most upside of any of those guys behind Dallas Goddard when it comes to the receiving game. But it's not bad to have two veterans in Elber O, CJ Uzamanow, Grant Calcaterra going into his third season, and the potential to still use a heck a top 53 pick on a tight end. Like if Ben Sinnott's on the board at 50, I'm, I'm still taking him with that tight end room that you have currently. But is it an upgrade? Did the Eagles get better at the tight end position today? Absolutely. Having a guy who's 31 years old come into that room where Dallas Goddard and Albert O are the veterans and who knows how long Albert O is going to be here in Dallas Goddard. They drafted his replacement. They drafted him to replace Zach Ertz at the same exact age that Dallas Goddard is now. So heck having stability, having somebody in there that isn't a first year player like Grant Calcaterra was two years ago and Jack Stoll and trying to find guys on day three of the draft. They now at least have four solid options in that room. You have Dallas Goddard, who's still a top seven player at his position all day long. You bring in CJ Ozama to go and thoroughly challenge what they have there. This is going to be a competition for that second tight end position. Do they keep all four of these guys? I do not know who has the best of them to make it, the best opportunity. Probably CJO and Albert O. Grant Calcaterra, he's oft injured. Albert O, they used a draft pick on him to acquire him from the, the Denver Broncos. I almost said Detroit Lions. I'm living in Denver. Come on, Gino, figure it out. But they add him. They sign him to an extension. It's two weeks to the day before the draft, and they wanted to bring in C.J. Ozama. So I think that's that's probably a good pat on the back for him saying, hey, even if we do draft a guy, you have a pretty good chance to make this roster. Albert O, they signed him to an extension earlier in the offseason. Is he a lock? I wouldn't say so. Is Grant Calcaterra? Absolutely not. This tight end room could look a lot different in two years from now, but today with the four guys that they have in there, they have a pretty solid group. Now, are they going to be a team that goes out there and drafts a tight end in round one? I wouldn't say that, but I wouldn't take it off the table. We're going to get to the offensive guys after we talk about some defensive prospects in a game that I just came up with. Take them, trade up, or trade down. I'm sure I didn't come up with this game. But we're going to get into some fun on some guys that we have talked about as potential first-round targets for the Philadelphia Eagles. Come on back as we roll along on this episode here of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. As we roll on this episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA, NHL, baseball's in full swing, the Masters is going on right now, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game or match. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed, that's $150, bucks, win or lose. You simply place a bet from a slap shot to a shot on net in soccer to a home run in baseball to a slam dunk in basketball, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book and the number one sports book here at the Lockdown Podcast Network, and the only place we're safely wagering at the Lockdown Eagles Podcast. All right, everyone, continuing on this Thursday edition of LOE, I'm your host, Gino Camilleri, and once again, we are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, each and every day. And folks, are you still watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you sick of having to turn the volume down with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today for free. It's a 24-7 streaming channel programmed for your everyday viewing to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon TV for your channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team 
each and every day. While you're there, make sure you subscribe to all the shows, including LOE, to keep the pod alive. So, as I said, we are going to get into a little game that I came up with called Take Him, Trade Up, or Trade Down. Basically, the premise is easy. If Howie Roseman were to acquire said player at the draft come night one, guys that we have talked about over the past few weeks here at the Locked On Eagles podcast, over the last months, rather, leading up into the draft, how would Howie Roseman have to acquire this player? Would it be moving up a few spots to go and get him? Would it be sitting at 22 and just taking him? Or would it be smart to move down, get some assets, and then go ahead and take that player? This is opinion-based. It's totally going to depend on how you value the player. And I would love to hear what our everydayers have to say. So I'm going to give you the player. I'm going to give you a second to think. And then I'm going to voice my opinion, my viewpoint on it. So let's get started with some defensive players. I got 10 defensive guys. I got six on offense. So let's get right into the defense. Let's start at cornerback. Let's start with the position that I think a lot of us want to take. I know Louis DiBiase, our co-host, he wants cornerback more than anything. If Howie Roseman were to acquire cornerback out of Clemson, Nate Wiggins, how would he get said player? I'll give you a moment to think. Play the Jeopardy theme in your head. Understand the premise of the game. And here we go. In my opinion, if Nate Wiggins is there at 22, you take him. Now, you're probably screaming, Gino, he can't tackle against the run. He can't defend the run. Folks, miss me with all the negatives about these players. I come from the Scouting Academy. The thing we learn on day one Anybody can point out what somebody can't do. Only those who truly have an eye for it can see what a player can do. That's what you have to focus on. And I'm not saying that anybody doesn't have an eye for talent or that your opinion isn't as valid as my opinion. All I'm saying is the Eagles don't have a guy who can run a 4-2-1 at the cornerback position that can play as good of man coverage as Nate Wiggins can play. And if he does get out of phase, has that makeup ability that even if he's multiple yards behind a player, that sub 1.6 flying 20 that he threw out there at the combine, yeah, that's worthy of the 22nd overall pick in the NFL draft, especially if some of those bigger names are off the board. And I left Quinion Mitchell out of this experiment because I believe he's going to be the first guy taken off the board. So we started with Nate Wiggins. In my opinion, you take him. Well, what about the guy that might be taken before or after Wiggins, depending on your opinion, Terry and Arnold? Give you a second. And boom. To me, Terry and Arnold is the next best guy outside of Quinion Mitchell in this class. He's super young, but already so refined at the position when it comes to mirroring and man match situations and comes from the Saban tree where understanding quarters and man match and cover three and knowing quite literally everything about coverages comes into play in that defense. He has the work rate that far exceeds Kool-Aid McKinstry. When you turn on the tape, you can see that there's a divide between the two players, not saying that Kool-Aid is bad by any stretch of the imagination. But to me, Taron Arnold does everything you want your number one cornerback to do well. He does them well. And he could still get a lot better being as young and having all the tools that he has. So we're getting the point of this exercise. We're going to continue Defensive back, Cooper DeGene, out of Iowa. I said take him at pick 22. Even though he might not fit what the Eagles need, he could do a lot of things for you. He can wear a lot of hats. Bringing back Chauncey Gardner-Johnson made me realize that the Eagles love defensive backs that are versatile. And of course they do. If you're an offensive lineman, you got to play multiple positions. If you play defensive line, you got to play multiple positions. Why wouldn't that be the same thing for a defensive back? And that's why I would take Cooper DeGene at the 22nd pick. Kool-Aid McKinstry, would I take him? 
Nope. I would have traded down to go get him. (laughs) That was kind of dramatic. But like I said, when I was talking about Terry and Arnold, to me, Kool-Aid clearly is the second guy out of Alabama. You can look at some concerns when it comes to effort. If you got tackling questions when it comes to Nate Wiggins, why don't we have tackling questions when it comes to Kool-Aid McKinstry? See, that's why you can't kind of focus on these negatives. Got to focus on what these guys do well. Cooper DeGene does more things well than Kool-Aid McKinstry, and so does Nate Wiggins, in my opinion. I'd be happy if you trade down, not saying out of the first round. I think he's a first-round prospect. Heck, you trade six, seven spots. Wouldn't be too upset at that. All right, that does it for defensive back. On to the defensive line. We're going to start at the edge position. Let's start with edge rusher out of UCLA, Liatu Latu. You better Liatu trade down if you're going to take this player, simply because of the medicals. He has everything you want when it comes to the build of a technician at that position. I mean, he has 20 ways to kind of skin a cat when it comes to his pass rush arsenal, and he does all of them really well and you're talking about a position that there's guys coming out that maybe know one move he knows like 10 but he has a neck concern we just saw Leighton Van Der Esch one of our rivals have to retire early because of an injury very similar to Laiatu Latu if he's healthy you take him all day long you might even make the argument you would trade up in that situation if you were in dire straits but the knee that edge I think he's worthy of a trade down as well Chop Robinson, what do you believe? I believe he's a trade-down candidate as well. The reason I believe Chop is a trade-down candidate, and I wouldn't take him at 22, even though we have taken him at 22 in our mock drafts, that was solely to fill the exercise of drafting an edge rusher. There's only one guy at the edge position I would trade up for. And only one guy I would take at 22. The rest of them I want to trade down for. Chop's production last year will leave questions, but the upside is there. Howie Roseman having taken Derek Barnett, somebody with such a low floor, he definitely would take a guy like Chop. But I think the Pennsylvania love might be getting a little too rich. I'm just going to throw that out there but no chop robinson is going to go probably in the first round via a trade down more than likely if it was going to be from the eagles point of view continuing on let's go to edge rusher dallas turner i say take him at 22 what's your cup of tea at edge is it jared verse is it dallas turner is it latu is it chop robinson heck do you want a tweener and darius robinson where you trade down a little bit dallas turner is built a lot like what the Eagles already have. That's why he's not somebody I'm going to go and trade up for. Jared Verse, on the other hand, I kind of gave it away there. He is somebody I would go and trade up for. Because the only guy they have like Jared Verse on the roster is Josh Sweat, who currently only is on the team on a one-year deal. We don't know if he is going to be back long-term. But man, you talk about somebody who can win with power, who has explosion. Does he have elite bend? Absolutely not. But does he have enough to get the job done? Heck yeah, when you're that powerful, that physical at the point of attack, and you have that maneuverability to move up and down the line of scrimmage like a player like Josh Sweat, Jared Verse, I'm trading up for him. I'm taking Dallas Turner. I'm trading down for Latu Latu and Chop Robinson. Last position on defense, I didn't go with any linebackers. I Thoroughly don't believe any are going to be taken in the first round. You can make the argument that maybe somebody loves Edger and Cooper. Safety, I believe, it's a weaker class as well. But interior defensive line, two guys that we have talked about. One, Johnny Newton, not so much. Byron Murphy, we've talked a little bit more about. Johnny Newton, I'm trading down for. Byron Murphy, I'm trading up for. Johnny Newton, heck of a player, would transform this defense. Definitely so. But do the Eagles need an interior defensive lineman that bad 
that isn't going to basically is he going to replace Fletcher Cox is the role that this player has to have is Johnny Newton going to do that right away if you take him at 22 in my opinion no trade back a little bit can make sense he's more in a rotation but man Byron Murphy the more and more I watch him and I just I hate comps but it's like it's so easy to see like the build the leverage like the Aaron Donald Jalen Carter type of comp where these guys can play with unbelievable leverage and just get under your pads and explode off the ball. I would be willing, not saying I'm trading up 10, 15 spots, but heck if, if he stumbles down the board and you could get up to 16 with Seattle and all you have to give up is a fourth round pick and you could get Byron Murphy who might be the best defensive lineman in the class. Maybe at any position can make the argument. I'm sure to some teams he probably is. But what is your opinion? Everybody's opinion is different. I would love to hear your process, how you got there, what you think should happen in terms of some other defensive prospects. But we're going to finish up this episode of LOE talking about some guys on offense. Only six guys on offense, not as many positions to discuss. But come on back as we finish up this episode of LOE. As we roll on, this episode of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring it home and get huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available for U.S. customers. All right, everyone. Finishing up this Masters Thursday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. If you did anything today at work besides watch the Masters, I'm sorry. Make sure you're doing it the rest of the weekend. Make sure you go to FanDuel. Make sure you're playing there. Make sure you're subscribing to LOE so you can check out each and every show. We're finishing up with the game I just came up with literally right before I came on this show. Take him, trade up, or trade down. We started with the defense. Now we're on to the offense. Offense, it's a little lighter of a list. I truly think there's one position that they can take in the first round. It's offensive line. The fan duel favorite. It's offensive line. I said that on yesterday's show. If you missed it, go check it out. But there's one player, I believe, that could throw a wrench into some things. We'll save that one till the end. Let's start with offensive line. I took Joe Alt out of the equation. I took Olu Fushanu out of the equation. I took Tylee Fuaga out of the equation. I think those three are clearly going to be off the board. There's been no link of them to the Eagles in mock drafts. They don't really make it that far. So I stuck with some guys, especially one that I think Jeff Stoutland has his eyes on. And that is offensive lineman, wherever you want to put him, at guard, at tackle, out of Washington, Troy Fautani. So the Eagles acquire him. Was it via trade up? Did they take him at 22 or did they trade down? To me, you have to trade up to get this player. To get somebody who can start at multiple positions for you. Could start at guard. Could start at tackle. Has elite level balance. Just watch his combine workout. I mean, he stays as center as you could want, as square as you could want an offensive lineman to where he looks like an offensive, or a, a tight end rather. And he has crazy lateral agility, could take you out of the play at the point of attack. He can get up to the second and third level like Jeff Stoutland wants his offensive lineman to do all of the time. And after those three guys, three guys in Olufushanu, Joe Alt, and 
who else did I throw into that equation as well? Tyler Fuaga are taken. Who's the next guy up on the offensive line? More than likely Troy Fautanu. Or could it be J.C. Latham? Offensive lineman out of Alabama. To me, you take him if he's there at 22. He'll probably be selected sooner because of some offensive line needy teams, but he is a good enough player to warrant that 22nd selection. But in my opinion, somebody is going to take him to where it's not worth going and trading up for. Where Troy Fautano, I think there's a clear jump from J.C. Latham and Troy Fautano. I think Troy is just in a league of his own, and then it's the next group in J.C. Latham, who I would take at 22. And why? He's an Alabama guy. Stoutland loves his Alabama guys. Could play tackle for you. Fautanu could legitimately start for you next year at guard. Is Latham going to come in and play guard like some of the other guys in this equation could? I don't know. But is he probably the biggest surefire thing at the right tackle position. Oh, we also forgot our Marius Mims in this equation as well. I think he's going to be off the board. I I think he is the one that's kind of just going to continue to shoot up, and he solely is going to play tackle with that size. The Eagles, you can make the argument that they want somebody to play guard. I don't think they will, but you could. Graham Barton, Tyler Guyton, Jackson Powers Johnson. What do you think? We've taken Tyler Guyton at the 22nd pick in mock drafts before. I personally believe that he is going to be the pick at 22. But I still think you trade down to get that player. Medicals. How much did he really play there? Yes, you have Jeff Stoutland. But to make that argument... If you're not getting like a, a cream of the crop guy, guy like Troy Fautano, why don't you just take somebody a round or two later, like they do in the second round, and absolutely crush it in Landon Dickerson and Cam Jurgens and Tyler Steen? Article came out today, though, from ESPN. Matt Miller, he put out that Tyler Guyton seems to be the guy that the Eagles are keying on a little bit more and more. Would I love it at 22? No. Is it a better selection than Andre Dillard? Absolutely. Tyler Guyton is just a mammoth, man. I mean, that's everything you want in an offensive lineman, and he he's a mauler. That wasn't Andre Dillard's game. JPJ, I trade down as well. Same with Graham Barton. I think Graham Barton is selected higher than a lot of people think because he can play anywhere. He could literally play five positions on the offensive line. Played left tackle. It's expected to be a center. Who knows really where he can be? JPJ apparently is falling down lists a little bit. So those three guys I'm trading down for. Trade up for Troy Fatanu. If our Marius Mims is in striking range, you have to trade up for him. Just because he's a, he's a perfect prospect. He's a, he's perfect for the Eagles. He is size, strength, athleticism, like th- played eight games. I don't care. Jordan Mylod didn't play snap football. Look what he is now. But the offensive line, I, I'm hesitant to move up and or take a guy at all because of what Lou and I have discussed on the show time and time again. You're set there, and you don't know when Lane is going to retire. Tyler Steen, if you take a guy to play guard, when's he going to see the field? you got to let those guys play. So you trade down. But let's say you don't want to go offensive line, and you want to get a special player on the offense, not at wide receiver. But at tight end, what if Brock Bowers starts to slip? Is he a player you would trade up for? Personally, no. But if he's there at 22, and let's say all your favorites on the offensive line are gone. All those players I said that you would either take and or trade up for are gone. All the guys on the defensive line are gone. Those cornerbacks are gone. What if Brock Bowers is clearly the best player on the board when the Eagles select at 22? I have a hard time not taking him. 
he could transform that that offense, man. Really, that that, and we already talk about bringing in Saquon. Like that's that's game changing. Now is taking a first round tight end good business and something Howie Roseman is going to do? Maybe in alternate reality XZ asterisk plus minus sign, but not on Earth, not on Howie Roseman's Earth. No, he's not going to take a tight end. Personally, I would love to see it. I think he gets drafted by the Jets. Like after I saw the the odds from FanDuel, things tying him together to the Jets makes a lot of sense, man. Makes a lot of sense. But who knows? What I want to know though is what our everydayers think. Hope you like the show. Hope you like this exercise. We'll see where these guys land. Let me know what you would have done with each of these selections. Would you have taken them? Would you have traded up or traded down to acquire said player? Until tomorrow, that's going to do it for me here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. I appreciate you guys tuning in each and every day. If you're tuning in, and this is 75% of you, and you're not subscribed to the show, please do that right now. Subscribe to keep the pod alive. We've been doing it for over 1,300 episodes, over seven years. We're not slowing down. Make sure you subscribe. But if you want to take in some other sports at the Lockdown Podcast Network, make sure you check out the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube that is also free and available on Amazon Fire TV as well on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you with 24-7 coverage that will cover all the top sports and stories with local experts like myself plus our national shows covering every league. Locked on Sports Today is now available on the free Amazon TV Fire Channels app. You can find us there as well. And that'll do it for me, Gino Camilleri, signing off. Until tomorrow, fly, Eagles, fly.